So uh, X is um, very toxic. And I've said that before. I'm just finding that out. Finding out that you can't have opinions on X without getting, I don't know, trounced upon, insulted, or anything like that. Now, I've been blocked by a few people already. Um, especially whenever I call them out for saying something incredibly stupid. And usually what happens is they'll make an insult a few times. You call them out, they block you. They consider that as a big win. Um, you know, whenever I called out the person who called me a Nazi, got blocked. Today I got called a little bitch because apparently whenever you say, hey, just because somebody has an opinion, the logical response should not be violence. I caught, caught a little bitch, got told to kill myself with a emoji. And whenever I thrown the insult back at them, and I probably shouldn't have said it, but they blocked me. And this is a normal thing. This is a normal thing. It happens. I don't know why, but it is. It's just, just a thing that happens. And this was some 22-year-old furry guy that... Um, had the uh, Gaza thing on his uh, profile, had a uh, eye patch shadow the hedgehog and saying he's a comrade or something like that with, I don't know, I don't know, I guess communist stuff and, you know, I don't really care about that stuff. I don't care. I don't really care about any of that. Um, I was talking about video games and saying, hey, just because this guy has an opinion about video games and, you know, the DEI conversation doesn't mean just because you disagree with it, you should threaten them with violence. And this guy had nothing to do with it. He just joined in and decided to insult me a few times and just block me. Now, I've actually been blocked, too, by another person I found out today. I've never talked about this person. I never encountered this person. I read articles. I've never reposted or anything. Um... And this was in regards to the Alyssa McConte stuff, the IGN stuff where they come to find out they was trying to basically get Game Science, the developers of Black Myth Wukong, which is a pretty heavily anticipated game coming out here soon uh, by a Chinese company. Um, IGN wrote a big smear piece basically with no real merit or uh, evidence that they were a sexist bad company and also um, if you're familiar with um, some of these consulting agencies like Sweet Baby, uh, Hit Detection and other uh, places like that where they try to consult you and do things like add, help you add diversity to your games and all that stuff which inherently is not a terrible thing uh, but what's happening is a lot of these companies are extorting, and this is actually proven, extorting companies by saying, hey, you have to have this, or we're going to terrify you by writing smear pieces and uh, making all kinds of hit pieces and making your company look bad. Now, here's the thing. As a game publisher or a company, you see that kind of stuff. It's like, well, we really don't want to be considered as racist, sexist, or phobes or anything like that. And this is what these people do, like the gaming journalism and stuff like that. They don't really concentrate on the video games. They concentrate on having some type of narrative. Uh, but I got blocked by this person, and I have no clue. And apparently I found out from a friend that um, he's, he's, a, he's a little bit different, but I love him to death. Um, I still love him. He's a good guy. Um, we may disagree on some things, but he's a good guy. Um, but other than that, um, apparently there is some type of blockers that are automatically at, like it may be a bot that if you have uh, any interest or if you're following a certain creator, a uh, good example they gave was Matt Walsh, which I do follow. Um, I don't like everything he says, some stuff, but not everything. Uh, I mainly like to see the arguments happening in the comments because I am a disgusting troll. But apparently if you follow people like that, you automatically get uh, blocked, which is kind of stupid, honestly. Um, there's no real civil conversations on X. There's no such thing as a civil conversation. My big thing is I talk about video games and stuff like that a lot. I hardly interject with other political things. Uh, but whenever I see something completely stupid, I do voice my opinion about it. 
uh, or if there's an argument, I do try to um, defend myself, and sometimes I say stupid things, and they say stupid things. Usually whenever I say something really stupid, I hit them back with something even more stupid, because uh, it's, it's trolling. You guys know uh, how I've been covering the fraud editor stuff. I'm not, not particularly a clean person uh, when it comes to insults. Um, sometimes I put my foot in my mouth, but on X, I put my foot in my mouth a lot. Uh, so don't be surprised if you hop on X and you see me say something really stupid. Um, I just, there's no excuse, right? There's no real excuse. Um, but I, I, I actually enjoy, though, talking to uh, different people in terms of the video game stuff. Because that's something I'm really interested in. I am finding a lot of um, parallels to conversations we've had on this channel previously, especially with the fraud editor stuff. Uh, one of the big things right now is uh, there's a creator named Alyssa McConte who was a, or who is, or who was, I don't know what she is now, pretty sure she still is, a writer at Kotaku. Um, she's very toxic, very narcissistic, uh, very narcissistic to the point where you guys would know this. We know a lot about narcissistic people, especially people with huge egos. Uh, once familiar, we know Chili. You guys know Chili. We all know Chili. What's Chili do? He has got a big ego. He's a narcissist and also challenges people to fight and runs away from them. This is no different with her. Um, this is happening on that end, too, come to find out. Um, Melissa McC Alyssa McConte, I'm pretty sure she'll block me, uh, even though this is probably the first thing I've said about her. Um, she makes she makes some pretty uh, bad insults to people just because she disagrees with them. Uh, she's a narcissist. Uh, she has threatened some creators to fight them. She actually got on the Giant Bomb podcast. A uh, very similar situation with G4, how Frost... Single-handedly, pretty much with Adam Sessler and all the other crazy uh, controversies that was going on, pretty much destroyed G4. That's why it's no longer around anymore. Uh, basically, what has happened is you're forcing uh, ideolo the ideologies and uh, stuff like that into video games. And that, that's not inherently a bad thing. Uh, I think diverse video games is great for gaming. I think diversity is cool. Um, I'm not into forced diversity just for diversity. There should be a reason for it. There shouldn't be just thrown in there just because uh, representation. Um, that just doesn't make a lot of sense. That's why you're seeing a lot of games failing and you see a lot of backlash with a lot of people coming back saying, hey, why are you doing this? Why are you putting some kind of political message in this game or changing characters or adding things like sexuality to characters when that's not even been a part of the game. Why are you adding that? Why, why does that make sense? And again, there's nothing wrong with adding diversity or creating characters with uh, different sexualities, political views, different colors of their skin. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. It's when you make the whole game, you make that the sole focus of the game. Um, and you call people out, call them bad people if they have opinions about it. Um, good example, like I said, Battlefield was a Battlefield uh, 5 came out uh, a few years ago. And there was a trailer, it's a famous trailer, and it got a lot, it got ratioed to hell pretty much. And what happened was it was a World War II game, and it was a female soldier with a prosthetic arm. Um, which she was like a badass soldier and, you know, that's cool, but, you know, Battlefield has always been about realism and authenticity until then, and it makes, made it look really cartoony, and the fan base behind it's like, hey, why are you putting a one-armed, robot-armed uh, female soldier in this World War II game where that didn't exist, and then say, hey, uh, we're trying to be authentic. It's not really being authentic. It's just pushing propaganda. Um, and again, like I said, there's nothing wrong having female characters. A lot of video games have great female characters. One of my favorite games of all time, uh, Unreal Tournament, had tons of female representation. Uh, you create your own characters. You have female, male. Uh, what's the uh, robots? Cyraxes, I think. 
not that Cyrax, but they, I think it was Cyrax. Um, Representation's been in video games for a long time. Um, but it's just the discussion, like, it's been going on. And like I said, with Alyssa McConte, uh, she's been making a lot of big deals about this stuff by making hit pieces about video games if they don't have certain representations in them, especially if there's no real need for it and it's already been made. Um, her latest piece on Kotaku was following the new Elden Ring DLC. Uh, basically, um, the Earth Tree, Shadow of the Earth Tree, $40 expansion. That's uh, like 40 hours long or more for Elden Ring. Uh, she basically turned the whole review into something about her, which is another thing narcissists do. Um, they try to get victim points, and they make things that has nothing to do with them about them. In this case, being a video game DLC, uh, the whole article's been pretty much shared all over X. But uh, not only that, currently she's still kind of getting backlash from where she wanted people to fight her. People stood up. A lot of content creators say, hey, let's go do this. And she immediately backed away. There was actually another content creator named Keemstar, which he has a pretty dicey pass. Uh, he runs Drama Alert. And um, some people might think he's really toxic, which he's a troll. He is toxic, but I kind of like the guy. He's... He's good at what he does. Uh, he was actually going to help try to set this up, but she backed off on that. I had Vera Dark and a few other people. I think she was trying to go after... Um, there's this... I think her name's Kate, maybe. I, I can't think of her name. Uh, I follow her just to see because there's a lot of people hate on her because uh, she's like a Christian and she does say some pretty awful things. Uh, she's a Christian gamer. But there's a lot of people stood up. She backed out, walked away, basically said hey, I'm a really busy person and I'm not going to fight. Then after the backlash, she blocked some blocked the people, then got on and started bashing those people just like Chili did, uh, where Chad set up everything that was going to fight. And he came up, had some excuse, saying he was really busy. Then when that didn't work, he went immediately to his health. And then he went back to California or wherever the fuck he's from and started bashing Chad again. It's the same old, same old, but it's in, <laughs> it's pretty much everywhere. It's not just uh, the frauditor scene. We're seeing this all over the place. Uh, and it's basically these people with gigantic inflated egos. Um, I think they are top dog, and when they get called out, they run away and cower. And it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. And if you, if you get a chance, um, just on YouTube in general, just Google, just type in Alyssa McConte, um, and you can see all the crazy shit that's going on with that. Uh, good good example, go to Vera Dark, check her out. Um, there's also, uh, well, Grums, uh, which people hate Grums on X. Some people do, some people don't. I like what he has to say on some things, and I disagree on other things. I do follow Grums, uh, Smash JT. That's the big one right now. Smash JT, um, Alyssa hates that guy. She got even to the point where people were calling his work, uh, employers that he worked for, his wife, to try to basically ruin his life because he had an opinion. That's familiar, right? You have a bad feeling that if you have an opinion, you don't disagree with it. Either one of the things they go to is either violence or start doxing you, which is really bad. That's a really terrible thing just because you have some opinion on something. Or if you call something out you don't like, the other person shouldn't be going and trying to ruin your life by taking away your funding sources or ruin relationships. That's a really stupid fucking thing to do. That's childish. That's not a W. Say if he lost his job. Say if... His wife left him. That's not a W. That's sad. That's just really sad. That's pathetic. That's not how you win a fight or a conversation. You talk about it. You have a civil conversation. And guess what? If you fucking disagree with that conversation, that's your right. You're allowed to have different opinions. But right now, on these certain situations, you have to have an approved opinion and you have to have an approved list of people that you could follow or you are some kind of bigot or piece of shit 
uh, that's you know worthless, and we're going to smear you. We're going to destroy you. That's really dumb. That's really sad, and it makes you look like an asshole. I'm sorry. It's true, but stop doing that. Stop doing that. Just have a conversation. If you don't like it, then you know do what you normally do and just block people. But some people can't handle that, and they have to continue talking and uh, making an ass out of themselves. But that's what I think. Love you guys. I'll see you soon.